Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phonebench and today we are reviewing the Micromax Canvas Express 2. Now priced at Rs 6000, this phone packs quite a lot. 13 megapixel rear, 2 megapixel front camera, Octa-Core MediaTek MT6592M, 1 gig of RAM, 8 gig of internal storage with a 2500 mAh battery inside. So how does it fare in everyday usage? Actually, I've been using this phone on and off for the last one month and here's everything I feel about the device. So let's start with the build first. Coming to the right, you have the power lock and unlock button and the volume rocker of the device. Now, these don't have great travel, not that great of feedback. They are a bit mushy, but they do get the job done. And you can see this golden trim, which actually looks quite elegant. It is not that shiny. It is sort of matte as well. At the top, you have the secondary noise cancellation mic, audio jack, nothing on the left. At the bottom, you have a single speaker and the microphone on the left. It's just been designed to make it look symmetrical. You also have the micro USB port in the bottom. Now, if you move to the back of the device, you'll see that you have sort of a subtle curve, which does make the phone easier to grip. And the design actually feels very nice. It feels modern. You have the 13 megapixel camera right there at the back. It does protrude a little bit. You have dual LED flash here as well. And the back is a very nice soft touch matte finish. Now it does get a bit smudged with fingerprints, but it feels good to hold in the hand. It provides good grip as well. Overall, the ergonomic design of the phone is very well balanced and can be used in one hand very easily as well. The back cover in itself is quite sturdy as well and you have two separate SIM card slot and a separate micro SD card slot as well to expand storage up to 32 gigs along with 2500 mAh removable battery. Coming to the top, you have proximity and light sensors, notification LED along with the 2 megapixel front facing camera and the main earpiece. And if we come to the bottom, you have on-screen buttons over here. Now the chin on the device is really not that large. And moreover, this display has very nice viewing angles. It is quite sharp as well. It is a 5-inch panel, IPS, 720p. And the viewing angles, as I said earlier, are quite wide. Slight color distortion, but this is one of the best displays you can get at this price point. Now, coming to network and call quality, we didn't have any major issues with call quality here, but network reception is actually not that great. I wasn't able to get network on Vodafone as well as Airtel in places where I usually get more than three signal bars. You have auto call recording as well as call recording built into the call dialer as well. Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth as well as USB tethering do work out quite fine. Now again, network connectivity is pretty average. It's not bad and there were no call drops. You do have GPS built in the device and you have a magnetic field sensor which aids navigation. You can see all the sensors available on the device. You do have a gyroscope as well, which is pretty rare in this price segment. You have a magnetic field sensor, as I said earlier too. Now coming to the camera, you have a 13 megapixel rear camera, which takes quite a long time to focus in. So you have to be patient while capturing images with the rear camera. You can see that it does take a little bit of time. Shutter speeds, however, are actually pretty good. You have a beauty mode, you have HDR mode, smile shutter, Quite a lot of modes, you have seen modes as well. Now the front facing camera is just about decent. Now you can see that the lighting actually here is pretty decent but still the image turned out quite grainy. Now coming to the images captured with the rear camera, you can see that sometimes they are a bit out of focus. But if you give it a little bit of time, you can definitely get great images with this camera. But yes, it does lack detail. It has great depth of field, you can see that here too. But Colors are sometimes a bit undersaturated. Focusing does take a little bit of time, but it is a pretty decent camera for the price. You can also see these 100% crops. It's not as good as other 13 megapixel cameras, but it is pretty decent. You have to factor in the price. This phone costs just rupees 6000. So with good amount of lighting, a little bit of patience, you can get really good shots. It has good depth of field. The HDR modes add great dynamic range. It really pops the image out. You have great contrast with those images. You can see this HDR mode image as well. Quite a lot more detail. Sadly, all the great things are only when there is good lighting. As soon as the light gets dim, the camera isn't able to focus at all, especially when you don't use the flash. Images turn out very grainy indoors as well. But the flash is really helpful. You can see that image. It's almost in the dark. And now there's quite a lot of light. 
due to that dual LED flash. So this is the headset that you get within the box. Again, these just look nice. These don't sound good at all. I would recommend getting your own pair if you want to listen to music. Audio quality through the headset jack is actually pretty good. It's not as good as the Redmi 2, but then again, it's pretty decent. You have an equalizer built in as well. You can record FM and the phone is able to find channels pretty quickly and the network reception for FM radio is pretty decent as well. Now you can play 1080p videos. We have tried MKV, 3GP, AVI. All of these worked out quite fine. You can install MX player to play other formats as well. And there was no lag whatsoever. Now we are playing a video over YouTube. It's 720p. The speakerphone here is actually pretty decently loud. It's not as loud as the Redmi 2, but it definitely gets the job done. Now, if we come to software, this phone is running Android 4.4 KitKat, and Micromax has said that they are working on a lollipop update for this device. And you must have already seen this launcher as well. You have quick look to the left, and it's actually quite similar to the Google Now launcher. Instead of Google Now, you have quick look, you can add widgets, there are some gestures built in as well, but these generally don't work that well. So if I pinch to zoom, it opens up the dialer, but more often than not, it actually doesn't work. Now, if you come to the top, you have your notification quick toggles. So it's actually very stock looking Android experience. Icons uh, have been changed, uh, the theme has been changed a little bit, but that's just about it. There's a bit of bloatware that comes installed as well, but you can uninstall or disable most of them. Now coming to storage, you have 8 gigs of storage available on the device, out of which 4 odd gigs is available to you when you get the device in your hand. And you can expand storage with the micro SD card, sadly app data is not movable. USB OTG is also supported and now I'm playing a video right off the USB disk and you can see that plays quite well. Now if we come to RAM management, that is also very good on this device. So you have about 400 odd MB RAM that is free right now, even though so many apps are running in the background. Now performance is a bit iffy on this device. Sometimes you get really good performance, apps open up quickly, multitasking is also good, and sometimes apps begin to stutter. I haven't noticed any app crashing, and you can also see in web browsing that pinch to zoom is quite smooth, but text and images do take a little bit of time to render. Now you can see right here, Animations are pretty smooth and apps are opening very quickly right now. And even if I switch between different apps, they don't take a lot of time to open up. And you can see that even if I go back to Chrome after opening so many apps, it's still kept in memory. So RAM management is decent, but performance is really not that consistent. But that doesn't translate to gaming. Gaming was actually very good on this device. Given the price point, this phone was able to play most of the high-end games without any major lag. Moreover, it didn't heat up much either. Yes, it did get a bit warm after playing games for more than 10 odd minutes, but that's expected again. Overall gameplay was pretty decent on this device. You can see that we are playing Modern Combat 5 and it plays quite well. This phone has a Mali 450 GPU, which we have already seen does perform quite well on other handsets as well. Moreover, the touch response was pretty decent from the display and the speakerphone is decently loud again. Now coming to battery life, that was a bit inconsistent for us and that was due to this M Live app. I would recommend that you should disable this app to get more battery life out of this device and after disabling that, we were able to get through one day of usage easily with about three odd hours of screen on time. So that was the only thing that was draining battery on the device. Overall performance is pretty decent. The build and design of the smartphone is actually one of the most highlighting features, as is the display of the device. The Canvas Express 2 really stands out due to its design more so than anything else. And we expect that it will be upgraded to Android Lollipop that might bring in better performance as well. Now even today it is actually a pretty decent option if you are looking for a smartphone with a 5 inch display, good enough performance and decent cameras as well. We'll be back with more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, hit us in the comments section. And as always, have a great day.